Well, uh, the concept of, of, of territorial cohesion is it's a difficult one to, 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 to set very unequivocally because uh, definitions um, vary even to the extreme point I would say that there are as many definitions of territorial cohesion as there are definitioners. Uh, you find if of course uh, a kind of um, a rhetorical argumentation in, in, in certain rather <coughs> important European uh, level policy document and the most important one is the, the uh, Treaty of Lisbon where uh, territorial cohesion is acknowledged as a horizontal goal of the European Union. That means that it holds a, a specific uh, uh, position which is rather unique. It's on a par with uh, the traditional uh, goals of, of economic or social uh, cohesion or um, uh, equal opportunities if you like. So um, it has a specific uh, uh, place. Um, in, in, in the European Commission's uh, green paper on, on territorial cohesion from 2000 and eight, uh, it, it was denoted as a means of transforming diversity into an asset that contributes to sustainable development in the, uh, in the entire uh, European Union. So, so that was uh, one of the first after the Lisbon Treaty then, where it was um, specifically uh, treated in, in, in territorial documents. Then we have in 2011 was a, a, a another milestone document called the Territorial Agenda, sometimes um, abbreviated as the TA, where uh, it was stated that it was a, a set of principles for harmonious, balanced, efficient, sustainable um, territorial development. So basically you, you, you have it all there. Uh, as is um, probably apparent to most, it's a very multidimensional concept. Um, as a scientist, I would be tempted to say it has everything and nothing in it, in a way. So it's all at once. And even if, if people cannot, how to say, I, it's not a question of agreeing what it is, but it's a question of defining it. Even if, if, if um, different people define it in different ways, there are some core concepts um, that are um, uh, found throughout these variations. And, and it, it's, it's basically how to enforce territorial aspects in general and, and, and economic, uh, social planning and decision making in particular. That seems to be somehow universally um, uh, uh, comprehended. Uh, then you had um, uh, adding to this complexity of, of, of this debate um, um, comes the, the, the notion of, 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 of uh, regions with specific geographic uh, features. We are, are, uh, they were introduced in, in 2008, I think, and we are speaking about uh, regions such as, as mountains, um, islands, uh, sparsely populated areas, um, border regions, um, rural areas. Uh, these were somehow uh, attached to the, to, to, to the general discourse on, of, of territorial cohesion, I mean policy discourse. Uh, in 2009, um, a countryman of you, Fabrizio Barca, uh, was uh, given a, a task to, to redesign or, or have, a, have a fresh look at, 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 at territorial policies. And, and he, he wrote the, the, an agenda for a reformed cohesion policy. Where, where even in the subtitle it caused a place-based approach uh, to meet the European Union challenges and expectations. So the notion of, of, of place uh, 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 gained in, in a way um, uh, strengthened um, uh, 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 <coughs> attention here. And, and not only place as kind of handicap, like you said, in the islands or in the mountains or where I come from, Finland's sparse regions which are really handicapped in a way, but also uh, the notion of that every region has something unique to offer and, and therefore you cannot have a one-size-fits-all 
um, policy because every region is unique. Uh, at the same time, it's clear that uh, uh, these kind of varying definitions in, in, in the of, of territorial cohesion uh, um, are a problem to a certain extent. But others again argue that, that they, they actually uh, act as a strength, this diversity of, 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 of um, how to say, um, <coughs> comprehensions of, t of territorial cohesion or TC as we say. Um, for us, uh, uh, who are dealing with measurements, this is of course a problem, so, so uh, 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 which we need to tackle. Territorial cohesion is, is, is not a policy instrument, it would be wrong to see it as is that. It, it's a, a way of harmonizing, in principle, all but in practice, the, the, the territorially most relevant uh, uh, different policy measures and actions uh, by way of taking into account uh, their spatial aspects, the spatial aspects of, or the territorial aspects of the policy outcome. And it's also a way of, of securing that different uh, policy uh, uh, instruments and, and different policy sectors uh, should work in the same uh, direction when it concerns territorial development, so that you don't have um, uh, contradictory uh, mm, policies that kind of eat each other out from a territorial point of view. So, 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 so that is uh, uh, maybe the, the case. On the question of whether or not one should measure territorial cohesion, uh, of course, sooner or later, as with all policy goals, there is a need to measure it, both qualitatively and, and also maybe I would say more specifically quantitatively, because somehow people seem to believe more in numbers, which I find bizarre, but that is the case. Uh, because you need to somehow be able to see whether or not you are moving towards or away from territorial cohesion. You could compare this situation, for instance, um, uh, uh, with the goal of competitiveness. If you would not have your standard competitiveness measurement instrument like GDP or, or productivity or whatever, uh, you know, employment rates and stuff like that, it, it would not function. So. There is a need always when something new comes. The, the, the same story was uh, being told with, with sustainable development. First, this was on a rhetoric scale and everybody says, this is very fine. And suddenly somebody says, well, I want you to measure it. Okay, so same thing has happened with territorial cohesion. Um, so uh, it should definitely, I would say, uh, be measured uh, as such. And uh, to add it, um, uh, it should be measured both in a qualitative sense and, and, and where possible, because it is not possible all throughout, uh, also in a quantitative um, aspect. Uh, 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 so, a, a, a question regarding uh, if and if yes, what could be measured uh, from uh, in, in terms of, of, of territorial cohesion, then as a, as a one doing measurements, of course, the first and foremost question is how do you measure something that you don't know what it is? It's a rather difficult task. Hitherto, there have been surprisingly few attempts at, at, at measuring and territorial cohesion. Now this, this, this um, <coughs> how to say, historical attempts can be divided into two groups. The first group is basically uh, focused on a collection of thematic variables or thematic indicators that, that should be utilized in measuring territorial cohesion. There are many ESPON projects uh, dealing with this issue, just to mention a couple, uh, Interco or KitCasp, for instance. 
So they have been saying that this and this and this and these indicators are important for territorial cohesion. Then there is another line trajectory or measurement that puts this one a little bit further. They discuss ways of combining these uh, disparate indicators into some sort of more handleable composite index or, or, or something like that. Uh, uh, Farugian, Galina, uh, Prezioso from Tor Vergata in Rome, or, or Medeiros, which is maybe the most uh, known, um, um, is basically on, on this trajectory. So these measurements, uh, to me, they result somehow uh, at best in, in something that you can use to rank different regions in Europe or localities, but they disclose rather little of the, of, of the spatio-territorial processes behind um, uh, 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 what is driving this, this, this cohesive or, or non-cohesive aspect. So if you would like to have it simply, uh, they have been dealt with, uh, with, with what should we measure, measure territorial cohesion, but not how to measure it. So th there is an important uh, uh, scientific and applied scientific lack in this respect. Uh, my own research has, has shown that we can measure territorial cohesion, but not totally. So there are some aspects that lend themselves to, to, to quantitative measurement, and then there are other aspects of territorial cohesion from the general discourse that we know that it's not possible. So, and, and I've come up with at least three different, um, 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 <coughs> how to say, um, um, uh, schemes uh, or, or, or frameworks where, where you should. And the first one um, uh, concerns distribution or equality or inequality aspects of, 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 of the space. So that has been on the agenda already for nearly 30 years, but it hasn't disappeared anything. It's just part of, of, of this territorial cohesion, um, if you like. And the second uh, <coughs> major thematic uh, measurement concerns uh, convergence or divergence, if you go in the opposite direction then. Uh, also convergence has been on, on, on the agenda for, for more than 30 years. And it hasn't disappeared anywhere. It's still there as an integral part of, of uh, territorial cohesion. Convergence meaning that whether or not those that are most handicapped now are kind of catching up faster than, than those that are already kind of in a more advanced state. So, so, so you would have like to see that and sooner or later everybody would converge either directly or in different forms of, of um, convergence um, uh, uh, clubs, uh, which is a scientific term used here often. And then the, the, the third thing that lends itself to measurement is the issue of territorial specificities. So um, <coughs> these three um, are in a way uh, possible somehow to, to, to transform into a quantitative measurement. But at the same time, it's also very obvious that uh, it is not possible quantitatively to de measure the whole entire um, uh, governance aspect of, of territorial cohesion, the streamlining of the policies and, and how could you do that? That is something that you must assess in a qualitative sense rather. This is, I'm not saying it is not important to assess this. It is very important also to assess this factor, probably most important, but, but I'm just saying that it's difficult to do with numbers. So you have to do it in, 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 in other ways. Um, the attempts to measure territorial cohesion in a European space um, today, what, what can they really tell us? Well, the problem, the, the, child, the prob word problem is forbidden always, but I would say this is really a problem, is, is, is the uh, finding the optimal scale of analysis. So there is something that we, we call the MAUP, the Modifiable Aerial Unit Problem. Uh, 
which means that you get different answers if you look at different spatial levels or aggreg aggregations. So the, the, the answers are completely different and they are contradictory in many cases. The classic example concerns um, uh, cohesion. If you look at countries, countries by any, nearly any standard measurements are becoming increasingly similar within the European Union. But at the same time, it's exploding inside the countries. So the regions inside the countries are becoming increasingly dissimilar to each other. And furthermore, the regions in the European Union are becoming increasingly more dissimilar to each other. It's a reflection of the multitude of, of, of realities that Europe is faced with today. So you have these kind of two scale problems here that they don't meet each other in a way. So for a scientist, of course, it is a, 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 the, the primary question is which is the optimal level for science? But now, since this is an applied problem and scientists don't per se have so much interest in, in, in territorial cohesion because it's a policy concept. Therefore, it means that it has policy implications. And policy in European Union is done at other territorial levels than are interesting to science. So therefore, there is your kind of first uh, uh, um, challenge to address. So uh, the question here is, of course, um, which of these uh, uh, spatial processes um, could be of interest to, to territorial cohesion? Well, we can say a couple of things. We can say, in general, and now we are talking again at aggregate average level, so there are always exceptions, uh, as any lawyer will know, and the exceptions confirm the rule in a way. But in the general sense, we can say that the urban hierarchy is a very decisive factor when it comes to, to, to territorial performance. And therefore, you see these non-cohesive um, trends uh, very clearly in light of the urban hierarchy. You have the top layer of the capital cities, second tier cities, and, and, and regional cities, and so on, and rural areas. That is one thing that is very obvious. A second thing is very obvious that, that, that if you look at the, the, the rurality, uh, not, not at the urban hierarchy as such, but also in, 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 in a sense a rural hierarchy, you will see the same, same pattern. Furthermore, we can see in those places that those countries where, where you ha have a coastline, that generally development is much more rapid close to the sea for many reasons. For historical reasons, because of um, most um, uh, big cities uh, are situated by the sea, but also like in, 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 in let's say, southern Spain and so on, it's, it's, it's factors that, that the fact that it's by the sea. And, and also, uh, in those places, of course, the, the land use pressure is all also. So there is this negative um, 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 e effect of, of, of this. Border regions um, are problematic. We have been focusing for 20 years now to connect border regions, you know, across the border to each other. And we have neglect neglected a little bit the fact that it would be very, very important not only to connect two peripheral regions to each other, but the border regions should be connected back, you know, to the national centers, to, to the national core, so that there would be a two ways. So the focus has been very much on this one. Um, <clears throat> the sparsely populated areas of Northern Europe, uh, primarily then Finland, Sweden, and Scotland, um, are also um, a challenge as are the mountainous areas. So in general, all areas with low accessibility um, um, are facing increasing problems on average in, 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 in Europe. Meaning that if you, if you have a, a higher um, um, accessibility, you are situated in the core, the, the, the chances are that you are faring much better on average. There are very uh, many exceptions to this rule, not least in, in my part of the world, in, in, in Fennoscandia. Um, uh, one issue which has gained increasing attention nowadays are the so-called inner peripheries. 
inner peripheries are areas by uh, which by, by any sort of standard reasoning should be doing very well. And they are situated close to, to larger metropolitan areas, you know, usually within one or two hours or something like that. And, and everything is there. They may be in the right in the European core in, in Belgium or in Netherlands or so. Um, uh, and yet for some reason they don't manage. And we don't know really what is the driving force behind these inner peripheries, why, why they do not uh, succeed. Uh, it may be that they are not far enough, that they are, they, are, they are close but not close enough and they are far away but not far enough away. So they kind of fall in between and there is an increasing um, um, uh, scientific interest also towards this and th that, that is, um, fascinates me very much. How can you not perform when I come from a region where a periphery is a periphery? Um, and not like here where something is a periphery, you say it's not periphery, it's, it's central to us. Uh, so that is interesting. So, so, so there are many of these multiple layers of, 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 of issues that are, are, are going on. And the European space is extremely heterogeneous. So for anybody to come and say, this is the absolute truth, it's very difficult. And I, I for myself, I, I, I dare not say that. So therefore, I, one may only indicate into certain point into certain direction that it appears to be this way. On average, it could be this way and so on and so forth. But I think uh, the, the, the work with um, uh, measuring and describing the, the, the process and the patterns of territorial cohesion is, is something that needs to be done. And it will not go anywhere, disappear anywhere in, in coming years. On, on the contrary, uh, uh, at least the, the research what I have been doing in the context of the Baltic uh, Sea region has shown a rather huge and also, uh, let's say on a political level, very high level um, interest. So, uh, and also uh, for the commission. So, um, uh, so that it may well be that, that we see a lot more in this direction in the future. Thank you.